Hello, and welcome to Lessons with Laurie, where we look at some of the big ideas in the mathematics curriculum, kindergarten through grade five. In this lesson, we're going to continue the discussion of fractions, and in particular, fraction multiplication. And so I would ask you, when you think about that, what does it mean to multiply two fractions? What does it mean? And before you answer that, let's back it up a little bit and think about what does multiplication mean? Because the learning progression for students, they learn to multiply whole numbers, and then they learn to represent fractions, add and subtract fractions, and then uh, eventually multiply fractions. So let's look at what multiplication of whole numbers would mean. If I said, what is two times six, you might think of this model here. I think it's really important to be able to draw pictures or to have materials, manipulatives, to model what these operations are saying. Two times six means that we have two rows of six items, two times six, two groups of six, and our answer would be 12. And in third grade, students learn about a rectangular model for multiplication. So the dimensions of the rectangle would be two by six, and we would have an area of 12. Our product would be 12. Well, what would it mean if we now multiply a fraction times a whole number? What does that mean? For instance, what would one half times six mean? Well, I have a group of six red circles here. One half of six, one half times six. You might think of it in this way, thinking of two equal groups. Here's half of the six red circles, and I can read my answer. I could also do the same thing perhaps with one third times six. I have three equal groups here, so I have one third of the six red circles, and my answer would be two. Well, that's a fraction times a whole number, and when students are learning uh, about multiplication of fractions, we generally start with a unit fraction times a whole number. A unit fraction has one in the numerator and then some other whole number in the denominator one-half, one-third, one-fourth, one-fifth, and so on. When we then think about multiplying two fractions together though, for instance, one-half times one-third, what would that look like? Well, how do I start with a group of one-third? Well, I'm not gonna do it with whole number pieces here. If I wanna think about one-half times one-third, I would start first with a model of one-third so here's a picture of one-third, a model for one-third. My whole is the length of this strip. I've broken it into three equal parts, and so here's one-third of the whole. So what would one-half of this mean? One-half of this quantity mean? One-half times one-third. Here's another equivalent model for one-third that might give you a clue. Two-sixths is, is equivalent to one-third. Two-sixths is equal to one-third. And now if I ask the question, what is one-half times one-third? Maybe I look at this model and say, well, one-half of this quantity would be just this portion right here. But in order to name it, notice how we again go back to the unit. One-half of one-third would be one-sixth. Well, working with unit fractions, generally students can reason through that, and they recognize after several examples that there seems to be a pattern going on when they're multiplying unit fractions. So let's move away from unit fractions now, and I'm going to look at the problem seven-eighths times one-third. Seven-eighths times one-third. When I've worked with teachers across the country, I've asked this of thousands of teachers, and I asked them first to just tell me the answer. What is the answer to seven-eighths times one-third? But then I asked them, what is that really asking? What is the question asking here? Can you prove that your answer is correct? And can you use this problem in a real-life context? 
Well, without fail, teachers are able to answer this just as students are able to answer uh, this question. We can teach students very quickly the rule for multiplying fractions, meaning I simply multiply my numerators, I multiply my denominators, and I have an answer of 7 24 Getting that answer, however, does not mean that you understand what the problem is asking or that you can actually prove that it's correct. And that's the depth of understanding that I want for all students. If they're going to transfer that understanding in a new context, they have to understand what the question is asking and why their answer is correct. Well, this second answer here, what is the question really asking? It's really asking what part of a whole, what part of this whole is 7 eighths of one third? It's not simply asking 7 eighths of one third, it's asking what part of the whole is 7 eighths of one third. I need to remember my units. What is that whole looking like? So I'd like to show you now a couple of models to prove why 7 eighths times one third is indeed equal to 7 24ths. I'm going to do it two different ways. I'm going to use an area model as well as a linear model. In my area model, my whole is this square right now. I've broken it into three equal parts so that each part would be known as one third and I've shaded one of them. So here's one third. I now want to ask the question, what part of this whole is seven eighths of this green portion? Well, stop for a moment and, and just reason about this. I mean, if, we, if I asked you to estimate your answer, I think you would say probably the following. Seven-eighths of this region right here has to be less than that region right there because the whole region, one times one-third, is one-third. So seven-eighths of it has to be less than a third. Well, let's draw a picture of what that would look like. I want seven-eighths times one-third. So I'm going to take my one-third and divide it into eight equal parts. And I'll do this quickly and be roughly accurate, I hope, in doing so. So I've taken my one-third here and I've broken it into eight equal parts. What would seven-eighths of that one-third look like? Well, it would be seven of those eight pieces right there. So let's cross those out so we know the part that we're talking about. There's 7 eighths. Let's see if I can write upside down here. 7 eighths. So I want to know what name you would give to that big area right there. 7 eighths of 1 third. And again, it's in reference to our whole. Well, I can't name it unless I know what the rest of the unit looks like, meaning I have divided my first part into eight equal pieces. I need to divide each of these thirds into eight equal pieces as well. So I'm going to extend those lines down now. Seven eighths of one third is still the portion that I've X'd out up here but I now know how to name each one of those small little pieces because there are 24 parts here. So 7 eighths times 1 third is 7 24 7 24 of this whole right now is that X'd out area. Well, what would it look like as a linear model? Can you see how we're going to transfer now that same approach? I can see where one third is located on the number line here. Here's one third. I want to know what seven eighths of that length would look like, seven eighths. And again, it's going to be in reference to this whole in order to be able to name it. So I'm going to divide this one third into eight equal parts. And identify the 7 eighths here. I'll do a better job of writing it this time. Here's 7 eighths of the distance from zero to one third. 7 eighths of one third. What part of a whole though is that location right there? What name can we give it? 
Well, again, I can't name it unless I know what each one of these small units is equal to. So I need to subdivide each one of these parts into eight equal pieces as well. And I think you can understand that in doing so, I'm going to end up with eight times three or 24 equal parts. So what part of a whole is seven eighths of one third? It's equal to seven twenty-fourths. After students have done several of these examples where we do it with models so they can understand what's going on in multiplication of fractions, they really and honestly don't need to do too many to understand what the algorithm is going to be. And more importantly for me personally is, can they even estimate what that answer would be? For instance, if I ask the question, what is 15 sixteenths of three-fourths? Well, 15 sixteenths is pretty much the whole thing. 15 sixteenths times three-fourths, my answer is going to be just shy of three-fourths. It's important for me that students can estimate that answer and approximate what it's going to be before they even try to multiply. And again, it's important when we're working with any area of mathematics, we want students to learn with understanding. I hope that the models, the actual manipulatives here, as well as the models have helped you to understand why the algorithm is what it is for multiplication of fractions. Thank you for joining me. See you again next time.